Hello everyone and welcome to my advanced M2 tutorial. This tutorial is geared towards people who use M2 for solving the edges in blind and will show you a lot of tricks and concepts to make your M2 much faster. This tutorial will basically give you a rundown of the edge method I used to get my 36 official mean back in March 2017 and it's also a method very similar to what Angelo Zhang used to get his 35 and 38 official means back in November 2016. The series will be split up into three parts and each will be organized from simplest to most advanced concepts. Part one will cover some basic things that everyone who uses M2 needs to know. Part two will cover more ALG-based cases, very specific things, as well as introduce you to some basic commutators that can dramatically decrease your time, so once you practice them effectively. And the third part will cover how to transfer these concepts to midges for five blind or R2 for your wings. The series is also organized by the order I think you should learn the concepts, so if you're not really sure what to learn or when, just go through the videos chronologically and you should be good to go. So without further ado, enjoy. The first and probably easiest thing to fix is a few of your setup algs. So there are three cases where I usually see people mess up on their setup algs, and those cases are RB or N and SPEFs, LB or H and SPEFs, and BU or Q and SPEFs. For H and N or LB and RB, uh, I often see people doing this four move insertion where they set up like that or like this using um, the L and B moves or R and B moves. And that's not terrible, but it's very slow to the Algon comparison that I'm going to show you. So for RB, we can use wide U, R, wide U prime like that, and that will insert RB into UB as you want to do, and you can just do your M2 undo, and as you can see it solves that target. And for LB we can do something very similar, except you get two choices. So the first thing you can do is just mirror that ALG, so instead of doing wide U R wide U prime, you can do wide U prime L prime wide U like that. Or if you're not a fan of L moves, you can do wide U R prime wide U prime and then undo the setup. So you can choose either of those, they're very similar. I use the one with L moves like this, just because I prefer that. I don't like doing this R prime one, but it really is just up to you. Some people really don't like doing L moves. So if that's the case, you can use this one. Now, the next case is BU or Q and SPEFs. And the one that Noah Arthurs teaches is this ALG. And that's a lot of moves, and it's also very slow. And the one I would recommend is on screen right now. And it's really nice because it's all MU, and you can do it super fast. Like that, which is much faster than having to do all those B moves and R2s and stuff like that. So this is also a very easy ALG to memorize because you can see it's just U prime M prime three times, and then U prime M, and then U prime M prime another four times. And if you don't like doing U prime, you can also do U, it will work just as well. You can see those are the same ALG. I do U prime because I do M moves with my right hand, so I can have my left hand free to do the U moves. So replacing B moves with rotations. This one is kind of disorienting at first because a lot of people are taught that you have to always stay in your rotation for blind and that you should never leave it. But I assure you this one will get a lot easier with practice. So instead of doing a B move in your insertion for a case, say like RU, what you can instead do is do an X prime and then use the U instead of B because you're now in this orientation. So I like this one because a lot of times the finger tricks with B moves just don't work well, um, especially when you're transferring to M. But with U, you can actually do a lot of cases very easily. Now you may think, Josh, this is a lot of rotations. It seems like it'd be very slow to be rotating back and forth all the time. However, there are a lot of cases where if you get two targets that are both on the L face or both on the R face or al alternating L and R face, you can just stay in this X prime rotation. So here I have to go to RU LF, so I can just rotate like this. 
and then I don't even have to rotate back for the next one. Cycle breaking is something that most people don't give a lot of thought to, but can actually help yourselves a lot to have predetermined cycle break locations. That way you're not floundering around looking, oh, should I cycle break here? Should I cycle break here? You kind of know what you're doing when you have to get to a cycle break. So you may be thinking, Josh, how do I determine where to cycle break? It seems like pretty random, you know, you just pick one that isn't solved. Well, there are a few things that you can take into account. The first one is the speed of the target, as in how long it will take you to execute the ALG. So because of this, when you're using M2, I highly suggest that you use UB as your main cycle break location. The reason being the ALG is just M2. It's super fast. You get it, bam, M2. The next thing that you should take into account is the visibility of the target. So things that are on the F face are very visible. Things that are on the right and the left are also very visible. So because of that, I would recommend FL and FR for cycle break locations as well because the algs are very easy. The insertions are all single move, you know. That's a very fast alg. And also, they're on the front, which makes them very easy to see. And then the final thing you want to take into account is the clarity of the audio of the piece you're choosing. So a piece like UB in SPEFs and in my letter scheme, that piece is A. And the sound A or A is a very distinct one, and it's one that I know I'm not going to confuse with other targets on the cube. So because of that, that makes A a very good location. In SPEFs, this is L and this is J, and those are once again very good sounds because UL and J don't sound like many other letters. Um, in the same vein, R and T in SPEFs are also very good sounds, as well as the fact that these targets BL and BR also have very fast ALGs to execute. So because of this, when you're doing M2, I recommend that you prioritize these five cycle breaks in the order I show. So A or UB, then FL and FR, which is J and L, and then BL and BR, which is R and T. These five have the fastest ALGs of all of M2, and they're also five very distinct sounds if you're using the SPEFS letter scheme. The FU and BD targets are probably the most hated targets in all of M2, and for good reason. You have to do these really long, annoying ALGs, and you have to like switch between which ALG you do based on if it's an odd or an even letter, and that's really annoying. However, there is a way to make these targets really, really fast. So I'm going to show you a chart right now of sort of a key of how to make these targets quick, and then I'm going to show you how to actually apply it to yourselves. So I know that chart may not have made a whole lot of sense just by looking at it, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some example cases, and hopefully by demonstrating it, what's on that chart will make a little bit more sense. So the first example case I have is BD, FR, or SJ in the SPEF scheme. And as the chart said, when you have BD and then another piece, the pattern you use is M2, your setup move, M prime, undo setup move, M prime. So I'm going to demonstrate that now. BD, FR. You're going to do M2, the setup move, like this, M prime, undo the setup move, and then an M prime. And as you can see, it solved both targets. It's important to know that when you're using this trick, you're solving two targets at once, not just one. So you need to make sure that after you do this, you're not doing BD, FR, and then solving FR again. It solves two pieces at once. The next case we have is LD, FU, and the pattern for FU as the second target is to do an M prime, then the setup move, an M prime, undo the setup move, and then do an M2. So since we have FU as the second one, we're going to do M prime, our setup move, M prime, undo the setup move, and then an M2. And as we can see, that solves LD and FU. Now that's very nice because Instead of having to do those really long algs, we're doing just nine moves, and it's solving two pieces at once instead of just one. The next case I have here is LB, BD, or HS in SPEFs, 
and the pattern for BD as your second target goes M, setup move, M, undo setup move, M2. So we have BD as our second target, so M, setup move, M, undo setup move, M2. So our final example is FU, RU, or I am in spefs. And the pattern for FU as the first target is M2, setup move, M, undo setup move, M. So since we have FU as the first target, we're going to do M2, setup move, M, undo setup move, M. Now that chart may seem a little bit confusing, but I'm going to show it to you again so that you can see some of the similarities and sort of patterns you can look at to try to remember what order to do the M moves. So probably the most helpful thing to remember is that if you have FU or BD as the first target, that means that you have to start with an M2 and then do M prime, M prime, or MM, depending on which one. If the targets you have to do have BD or FU as the second target, that means that you have to do M2 at the end. So if FU or BD comes first, the M2 comes first, but if FU or BD comes last, then the M2 comes last. That might have seemed like a lot of information just in one video, but my best suggestion is to just go on CS Timer and check the 3x3 edges only option for scrambles and just do lots and lots of solves, either sighted or like blind style, of just your edges. Drilling these edges is really going to do so much for you more than just doing solves and solves and solves. So, practice these concepts. They're definitely going to be difficult at first, but with time, they can get very, very fast.